pedal. Um, okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about merch. Uh, just just some real basic things. Uh, we're fortunate fortunate enough to have a couple uh, cool people give us some some valuable information that they thought bands would uh, be able to use. Uh, modest modest merch out of uh, Chicago. Are you, any of you guys affiliated with modest merch? Because I don't know any of you guys. No. Okay. Cool. Uh, well, thanks for coming. Um, so Mike uh, from Modest Merch gave us a ton of valuable information and some basic things to consider when ordering merch, uh, as did Jack Prince, uh, an awesome uh, apparel company, uh, slightly slightly different than what uh, Modest Merch does. Um, they also do a lot of like uh, sticker printing and, and banners and things like that. Um, so uh, we'll just kind of go, go through this. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Mike from Modest Merch was uh, kind enough to give us a discount. So if any of you guys need to order T-shirts or anything like that, um, if you give, if you when you place your order, just use the the code Oasis Merch and you'll get ten percent off of a standard T-shirt order. Uh, and his prices are already pretty reasonable, so that's it makes it even more valuable. Um, good through July thirty first. Okay, um, so things to consider if you have your packet that's all kind of kind of listed out um so uh when you know one of the first things uh to consider when ordering merch is asking if there's going to be screen fees uh and that's just essentially taking the shirt design and and making this the screen out of it that if they're if they're it's a screen print shop that's basically applying the image to something that allows them to if you have ever used any screen print equipment you know, screen the actual ink onto the t uh, the T-shirt or sweatshirt or whatever. Um, so, design tips, uh, and the, this is just word for word uh, taken from what Mike had to say. So, wait a minute, make sure here. It looks like this might be a little out of order, so we'll have to we'll improvise. We're all musicians; we can do that. Um, yeah. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, so, having a a, a, a well prepared digital file, um, you know, in theory, you can have a hand drawn, you know, piece of art and uh, and give it to your your t shirt design company or your you know or your apparel company. Uh, but realistically, uh, you have to have uh, some. It has to be trans transferred to digital so that way they can make the screen. Um, and sometimes uh, things get lost in translation. So if you have a professional, and I can't, I can't stress this enough, having a professional take your design, or even better, in my opinion, just have a professional design it for you and, and try to keep it into the di in the digital realm, you'll be better off in terms of what your final final product looks like. Uh, and and I and I've said this before uh, for all things: photographs, uh, graphic design, web uh, interface stuff. Um, have a professional do it, and ideally, it's a professional who has already done it in the music field. You know, just because someone does, you know, photography, you know, wedding photos doesn't mean they can take a good band photo at all. Same thing with T-shirt designers. Uh, having someone who knows how to do good quality T-shirts, um, you know, for music, chances are will already be thinking, uh, kind of, or, or looking through a musical lens um, when taking your design onto some apparel. Uh, because realistically, uh, a bad design isn't going to sell, and nothing is worse than having, you know, 50 t-shirts left over that cost you 200 plus dollars, you know, sitting in a box in your garage. Um, so, uh, highest quality image possible makes a huge difference. Um, if you have a small, you know, small bitrate file or, uh, you know, just a low resolution image. Uh, it's gonna pixelate or it could be kind of grainy when they try to make the screen out of it. So the biggest, highest quality, you know, file that you can give them. A lot of times people want uh, like vectored files or illustrator files because they can uh, change the, the shape and size of it without necessarily losing any of the quality for it. Um, can't stress that enough. Uh, I've, I've seen a couple band t-shirts where you could tell it was pixelated when they screened it and it's just like that is awful how how can you let that slide you know and that that kind of goes on to uh 
the the screen the screen print shop as well like they should have caught that ahead of time um so shirt quality uh there's a lot of different shirts out there these days um you know the good majority of us here look to be wearing band t-shirts in some capacity uh whatever whatever this material is this seems to be the in thing these days uh i love this if a band has a shirt like this compared to like the what the regular the regular old you know american apparel style t-shirts i'm gonna buy one of these like for the band that has this just a lighter lighter material uh doesn't sit as heavy and the ink doesn't wear away the um the, the same way that like normal like thick ink band t-shirts are uh so we'll get there there's there's different types of inks that we can we can talk about um so realistically uh mike gave us a few different um types of t-shirts in terms of the uh like and it goes into detail why why you would pick one shirt over another and that's all personal preference um just keep in mind that different types different materials of t-shirts are going to influence the cost so you got to make sure that uh that's part of it um so let's see here ink choices and i feel like this goes on to page three nope never mind so uh few different options for inks uh i was hoping mike would be here because i i am by no means an expert on shirt inks uh but he kind of he kind of goes into into some detail um placid all water-based and discharge inks uh but let's see here yeah on this on this next page here um he like i said he details what what each of the inks are um the first one is just a thick thick ink uh, i feel like those are what the oasis t-shirts are made out of if you check up front um it's just a just a thicker thicker ink that sits on the uh sits on the shirt and th they they look good because they're really bold but i feel like after a few years that's when the those are the types of shirts that can start to crack a little bit the ink starts to crack uh it's no big deal like i feel like if I saw someone wearing a, like a Master of Puppets t-shirt and it didn't look all kind of worn and cracked a little bit, then, you know, like, it's, it's not authentic. So there, there's some value in having a t-shirt that can age properly like jeans. Um, so uh, he, he just kind of goes into some detail about inks, but I imagine that none of you are super, super concerned with the type of ink. You can, you can read up on them here. Um, so... I'm gonna I'm gonna skip to the third page because for whatever reason they seems to be out of order here. Uh, things to do when you're ordering. Uh, first up, ask questions. You should know the whole process, like when they are going to start screening, uh, how how long it's going to take, um, what the average average turn turnaround time is, the materials. You you know most screen screen shops will gladly answer all of that. Um, additionally. Uh, when you when you place your order, you should be ready. You should have all the, uh, you know, all of the files, as well as the sizes and amount that you're going to order. I know that seems uh, like an obvious obvious thing, but uh, screen screen printers deal with people showing up relatively unprepared, somewhat often. So, um, you know, it's it's worth going through and making sure that, uh, you know. You can you can order a couple, couple other options uh, as well. Um, like if you, if you are prepared, you can say, hey, can I get, you know, most of my shirts in black, but then can I get five gray or things like that? And usually, it's not necessarily going to be another uh, bump in cost, just because if they have the shirts, it's it's cool. You know, the shirts a shirt as far as the screenshots concerned. Uh, things to avoid. Uh, being disrespectful. Uh, if you'll notice, there's been a theme so far for all the different meetings, uh, and primarily it's you know building relationships and, and your networks, uh, and it always goes back to just being respectful and cool to the people you work with, um, including the guy making your shirts. Um, so uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, this is just you know, like I said, don't don't show up with you know hand drawn images uh, and don't expect to get good prices on small orders you know you usually with most 
most anything that you're going to order in terms of uh, band, whether it's going to be CDs or stickers or flyers or you know apparel, uh, it price goes down when the quantity goes up. So if you want to order you know 30 shirts, it's probably going to be seven dollars. But if you order 200 shirts, it's probably going to be five dollars a shirt. And uh, same, like I said, same thing with with CDs and all that other fun stuff. Um, em embroidery. Usually screen shops do not have any form of embroidery, but if you give them the embroidered like patch or something like that, they can they can apply it, uh, especially if it's an iron on. Um, but uh, you know, you said uh, embroidery is usually used with hats and patches and thing things of that nature. Um, so Mike does offer uh, screen printed patches, which is pretty cool. Um, and you know, screen printing isn't limited to just shirts or hoodies, things like that. Uh, patches are a good example. Um, I've seen really awesome CD covers done uh, screen printing, um, especially if they are uh, like the cardboard kind of, of CD covers um, that kind of like flip open. You can actually have those screened and it looks spectacular. Um, in my opinion, it's a little cooler, it's a little different than just like a regular uh, you know, plastic CD cover. Uh, so any, anything that you can screen that, that kind of changes uh, the, the, the traditional image or perspective on uh, whatever that item is, I think a lot of times it could, it could be pretty cool. Uh, if, if you are going to screen print on your uh, album cover, you have to be kind of picky on like your album art though, right? Because yeah. there's going to be a definite color limit and everything, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't go crazy with it. Like you're not necessarily going to get a full color, uh, you know, full color screen on it. Um, but you can, if you if you keep it to just a, a handful, maybe you know, one to four colors, uh, it can it can look awesome and very unique. And in when you have a five band show and there's five different bands selling all their goods, uh, having something that stands out a little bit and looks a little unique can go a long way. Um, and you can get posters screened and stuff like that as long as it's a thick enough material. Uh, and then they look great. They look absolutely great. Couldn't recommend that enough. Um, so iron-ons, uh, uh, Mike says avoid them if, if you can. And I trust them. Uh, you know, I've never seen an iron-on that either looked good or stayed iron-on. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, just, just a thought. Um, hats. Uh, obviously a ton of different types of hats um, and I, I feel like you know there it's a it's a decent merch option if if you can get a, de a good looking hat um, that isn't necessarily ironed on um, so usually you know embroidered or like heat press or iron on um, and I think they're great you know usually during the winter I I have a, a handful of band related knit caps that I kind of cycle through so if, if a band has one, uh, I'll pick it up. Um, so cost breakdown, and this is, this, there's some cool stuff here. Uh, gives, he, he basically just kind of gives you a ballpark figure of you know, what a shirt should cost, um, or a, an, an order roughly should cost. Uh, honestly, uh, I think that if you're in the ballpark of $5 for a one color shirt, you're, you're in good shape, uh, which bums me out because you know, ten years ago, back when I was ordering lots and lots of shirts, you could you can get them for like three bucks, three fifty, and stretch the dollar a little bit more. Uh, but as costs go up everywhere else, you know, sadly shirts do too. So you know, anywhere around five dollars. Um, and I, I, I don't think this is just me. I, I rarely feel it's worth a multicolored shirt, at least early on. They're just the cost goes up so much that it's just it makes it really really tough and I don't necessarily know that you're gonna sell more because there's a second or third color around there um, so it's not necessarily a deal breaker but there, there's a reason why most local bands have one colored shirts uh, and what I'm referring to is the ink not necessarily the color of the shirt so I mean I, th I feel like you could probably get a one design uh, screen with one ink and then you get like a blue shirt and a gray shirt and I don't know a yellow shirt or something like that, and that could be you know that that's that's a better use of colors as opposed to uh, trying to get one design with multiple colors. Um, something else to keep in mind is that the location of the screen could influ influence the price. 
Uh, so maybe five, six years ago, uh, side screens were like the in thing. Like t-shirts were no longer like, it wasn't on front, it was like on the side. Uh, and like, you know, one band did it, so all the bands did it. Uh, and, and those, those can get it can get a little bit a little bit uh, costly because um, you know if, if you've ever if you've ever been to a screen shop uh, usually they have a rotating uh, machine that lays uh, you know five or six shirts flat on these presses um, and then screens them like you like you you, you move the screen uh, the, the machine essentially across the across the shirt to kind of put the ink on the on the shirt. Um, and just due to the nature of a t-shirt, it doesn't necessarily set up for side uh, as easily. So it's a little more effort and a little more work to get those side presses on there. Uh, and then obviously, if you're gonna get front and back, cost is gonna go up a little bit. Uh, and all of those things are worth, worth asking ahead of time. Um, but like I said, single, single shirt or a single color uh, on a one, one screen design um, you know, Mike says 50 shirts, about five dollars a, in the ballpark of five dollars a shirt, which is a which is a good deal. Uh, something else to consider to to put into your cost. Um, you might find a company out of California that's doing shirts for four dollars. It's like, oh, that's it, that's a good deal. But then shipping ends up being eighty. Uh, you know that that that's where you that's where you get bit uh, when you you don't factor that in. If with Mike. You can go pick it up in the city. It's a, it's a good deal. Also, uh, Dave from the band Rule Twenty Two uh, does great great work. He's done some shirts for the Oasis. Um, his his company uh, is called Propaganda Machine, and he's out of Antioch. And his shirts are you know in the same ballpark, and you know great great guy, great great prices. Um, and you know so just just another option. Um, and he's been doing you know band stuff forever, so. I always feel I, I always feel like I'm in better hands when the person I'm dealing with is or was in bands. So uh, let's see here. I'm going to go back to page two now because it's all kind of out of order, like I said. Um, so you get what you pay for. Uh, you know, I, again, this is just Mike's words, but uh, kind of drilling the same same point home of you know. Realistically, you, you know, hire a professional. You, you, your band's image is of utmost importance because I don't know of a band, I can't think of a band off the top of my head that I heard before I saw in some capacity. Everything these days online, like someone sends me, oh, check out this band. And like, I'm, you know, it goes to their YouTube page. I might see like a crappy logo or their band camp or Facebook or whatever. And I hate, I hate seeing bands that, otherwise sound good, but have very, very poor graphic representation. And same thing with someone who's milling around the Oasis waiting for your band to perform. If they look at your merch table and your merch designs are weak, that's the first impression you're giving. Uh, and that's, that's rough, that's rough. Um, as well as if, you're, if your merch table is just like a, a mess, but we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, so still on, uh, on this page here, uh, we're going to switch over from uh, Modest Merch to Jack Prince. Uh, Jack Prince has been around since uh, I was buying a lot of band merch. Um, I still think that they're the best deal around for stickers. Uh, they're, they are very competitive, but they're their best deal, and it's, it's, it's tough to beat. It's a thousand uh, vinyl stickers, four-inch vinyl stickers. They're the Oasis stickers, so... If, uh, I think on one of these windows here, someone totally vandalized and put up a bunch of these stickers, but they're super high quality, which is why they're really on there nicely. They're totally stuck really well. Uh, but you can get a roll of 1,000 stickers for $99 and like $6 shipping. Uh, and they are, um, they're great, the, the super high quality. It's usually a one color sticker and a one color ink. So these are, we ordered white stickers with a black ink. Um, and, and keep in mind, whenever you order anything that's graphically printed, uh, if you have any sort of grays or gradients or anything like that, cost goes way up because they're really difficult to handle. So, but if you're dealing with a professional graphic designer in some capacity, they should know how to keep it one color or you know one color ink, one color sticker. Um, 
but I, I just can't stress that enough. I mean, for a thousand for a hundred bucks, that's an easy handout, uh, you know, free stuff. Uh, and again, uh, the quality is, is great. Well, once upon a time, uh, someone took one of my old band's stickers and put it on the light post at TGI Fridays in Gurney, and this was, this was probably 2001 or 2002, and it's still there and looks incredible. And the, the, it's just a testament to the quality of the sticker. You know, it's you know, I'm not going to necessarily promote vandalism, but I uh, will promote the quality of a good sticker. Can handle a Chicago winter. So, um, so Jack Prince has a blog with a bunch of uh, great, great, great articles on ordering merch and what bands should consider, things like that. Uh, and I had approached them. I said, hey, I'm, I'm going to do this thing about merchandise. Can you, what kind of information can you send me? And they sent me like 40 links, uh, which was incredible. So I just kind of took a couple of them, and tonight I'll post the blog links in, uh, in the event page if you are, if you follow that. Uh, so a few things. Um, Starting, you know, a couple tips uh, from Jack Prince. Start off with uh, smaller minimum quantities to see what kind of things uh, pick up with your fan base. Uh, I love this. I love going to buy merchandise from a band and having an option. Like, it sucks when I want to go up, go buy like a shirt from a band. And I, if you know me, then you know that I only wear band T-shirts. So it's. I love. I'm. I'm willing to buy a shirt if you have one for sale, and I love going up and having the choice of like, oh, do I want this design or this design? Uh, it always bums me out when it's just like, oh, there's one color shirt with one design, and I don't even like it that much. Uh, so ordering, you know, 50 shirts, and then a couple months later ordering 50 more with a different design, uh, it's worth it. it. It's it's nice to have options. In my opinion, it makes you it makes you look a little more professional. Uh, that's a big one. Um, so especially if you if you order like black and gray shirts the first time with one merch design, next time you could order you know red and blue different you know shirts, and it just it just gives you options. Uh, make makes that makes it look like you're more professional than you are, uh, which is always the goal. Um, so knowing your fans, that's a big one. Like if you order, uh, you know, a bunch of, uh, you know, like spaghetti string girl shirts but you play doom metal you've probably made a bad choice so it's worth it's worth investing in uh the shirts that are or you know the merch and apparel that are appropriate for uh your your band's music um and you should you should have a rough rough you know idea of that you know uh we were we, uh man uh, just just the other day we were talking uh with uh some some bands and they were they were saying how they're at the point now where they're old enough to wear the, most of the shirts they order are all extra large, because because all their friends are grown up and fat. So that you know now that it's like yeah, you know it sucks because we have to pay a little bit extra because it's all extra large. I guess he should hit up uh, Mike from Modest Merch, where the prices are uh, pretty competitive. Okay, um, so smaller accessories fit into pockets. Uh, are a great way to increase your exposure, and I and I made a list of a bunch of like kind of different merch ideas uh, later down. Uh, we'll get there. Um, giveaways, I love this. Uh, free stuff at your merch stand. Stickers are great, but if your band sucks, stickers aren't going to help you. Candy is universal, so go you know buy a cheap bag of candy and have it just in a bowl at your merch stand, and when people come over, just say hey, free candy. I mean, you can get a pack of candy, you know, a huge pack of candy at Sam's Club or Costco or whatever. Uh, it works. It's a, it's, it, it works. So, like, you know, maybe if you bundle it with, you know, like, oh, here, you know, I have a Jolly Rancher and this sticker or, you know, Jolly Rancher and buy my CD or else. Uh, stuff like that. I mean, it, it's, it's really worth it. I usually drink, like, a pack of cookies. Yeah, pack, I mean, stuff, yeah. Like yeah, that's, that's dedication. Oh, yeah. I was gonna say that that makes that makes a big deal or a big difference. You know, if I if you're bringing me over to your merch stand for cookies, they better be legit and and fresh. Um. So, yeah, giveaways are great. Um, and uh, like I said, it, it's going to it's going to create generate some traffic around your merch stand. Uh, 
which regardless of how good your performance was that night, you know, it, it, always, it always helps. Um, so keeping track of what sells and what doesn't. On the back page here, I, there's a, a real basic inventory sheet. Um, you don't necessarily have to be that uh, nerdy about it, but it doesn't hurt, you know. Uh, if your band has some sort of like iPod or iPad that you're using for uh, merchandise transactions, you can usually get some sort of inventory system in there too, which is wonderful. But if not, just make a little chart like this one. Uh, it's nice. It's nice to know because you know uh, I'm guessing most of you have sold merch at one time and realized that you, you're just you're not the only person that sits at the merch stand all night. So if you can if you can leave the show and get back to the rehearsal spot whenever you guys get back and you you can look at your your tally or your your graph here and say you know as long as everyone was filling it out you can say oh look you know we sold four shirts tonight that's good uh so uh, uh just a real generic in, uh inventory is is pretty valuable um so that way you don't have to like just count your money and be like ah i'm assuming we sold four shirts this when in reality, you know, you sold six and someone pocketed the rest. So uh, next up, pre-sales. Uh, you can see, you know, and thanks to like Kickstarter and stuff like that, uh, you can do pre-sales easier, but I wouldn't necessarily wouldn't do ki uh, Kickstarter for merch or something like that. You can very easily just do a Facebook or social media poll and say, hey, you know, if we're going to, we're gonna order hats. How many? Like, how many people would actually buy it? And if ten people respond, order twenty hats. You know, easy enough. Um, so uh, there's there's a lot of you know on here that they're they're talking about online merch sales companies. Uh, these days, I, I feel like Bandcamp is kind of cornering the market for all things DIY musician. So you can just put up the majority of your uh, or your merchandise on Bandcamp to sell through there. So that way it's, it's set up with PayPal and all that fun stuff. Uh, pretty easy. Pretty easy for online merch sales. There used to be another one. What am I thinking of? Zach? Big Cartel. Thanks. Thanks. I know. I'm not saying to use it. I'm just saying there used to be another one until Bandcamp decided to get even better. Oh, they are. No, it's not great. I just... Yeah, Store Envy. Good call. You gotta wonder if like tapping into a market that isn't isn't already b been ruined by bands because if you hadn't noticed we tend to ruin things we're like little tornadoes, uh, but like Etsy or something like that hop on Etsy to sell band merch because there's not other bands fighting <laughs> fighting for sales on there. Uh, just a thought. I, I've got no idea if it would actually work. Um, okay, on the next page or page four, I suppose I should have numbered them. Uh, there's a, an awesome chart. Uh, this is one of the many things that you can find on the uh, Jack Prince blogs, and it gives you a rough breakdown as to, in the ballpark, uh, where what the cost is for something and what most people sell it for. So you can see, on average, uh, what um, you know what kind of what kind of profits you're making. Uh, so the only the only thing on here I think that's that's kind of weird sounding is the raglan. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the raglan shirt. It's like uh, the baseball shirts where they might be like white on front with the logo, but like black or red or blue down the sides. Not unlike that shirt there, kind of in the ballpark. Yeah. Ah. Huh. Oh. No, it's totally intended. Totally. Um. So, um, it, it's just kind of a good ballpark. Uh. You know, I, th I thought it would be valuable. Um, at the bottom, there's I I found a few different uh, weird merch items that I don't see often, uh, or at least often enough. Um, so I just I, pr I put some links on there. Uh, lighters, if you know, I think everyone here is now old enough to buy a lighter, so don't feel as bad to put it on there. Um, you can get like a custom lighter with your band logo on there. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, especially at shows. Uh, frisbees. Uh, if you're in a jam band that plays a lot of outdoor festivals that I'll never go to, Frisbee would be a great, <laughs> great purchase. Uh, so um, key, 
keychain bottle openers, uh, those, those sell a lot. Uh, coasters, you can get coasters, which are cool. Um, but chances are, if someone's buying your CD, they already bought a coaster. Uh, uh, Steve, Steve Clayton, uh, dot com is a, it's a pick company. So if any of you guys have the Oasis picks, you, you can get pretty good deals. Like, you know, I think it's like 500 picks for 100 bucks or something like that. Uh, and you can get like, they have most like the, the normal pick materials, uh, but they don't have uh, gator grip, which bums me out. Because yeah, that's 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 how I roll. I'm a Gator Grip guy myself. Um, but those that could be a cool giveaway um, or a, a throw-in. You know, uh, anything anything that you can kind of like supplement a merch sale with goes a long way. So um, another thing uh, on here that uh, it's on the on the last page, but I'm a, I'm a big fan of um, tour laminates. You, you you can make them easy and cheap enough and you know probably DIY it without having to order them uh, you, laminates are a cool way like you know for a, you know, a fan who might not get a laminate from playing a show or like a you know a VIP pass or something like that from attending a show or some it's it's just a cool cool thing that you can toss in for like a like a VIP package deal Zach Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, you can you can you can make them wearable, cheap enough, or you can get like the little clips, like uh, you know we have up front for Oasis uh, staff members. Um, it's cool, you know. So w one of the things I, uh, I like to do is, you know, you have all your merch prices for individual items. Then you could have like a VIP pack that has everything and the the, the tour laminate or VIP laminate. Griff, what's up? Can you have a tour laminate if you're not on tour? Sure, why not? I mean, it, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't have to say tour. It could just say, you know, you know. No, I mean just. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I guarantee that you'll sell something by having that extra, the extra laminate. I think it's just a cool idea and e easy enough to do, uh, and and easy enough to make look uh, really, really cool. Um, you could even get them die cut if you had them made elsewhere, uh, which which takes it one step further. Um, and you know, like if you have two shirts or you know one shirt design stickers. Uh, a couple different records, and then you package it all together with the laminate as a VIP deal for you know twenty five bucks. I bet you sell it, especially if someone really likes your band. Um, so uh, temporary tattoos on there. Um, that's a that's a cool way to like do a you know the cheap giveaway. I don't think anyone would ever pay for them, but if I was walking around a show and saw a bunch of people like with rub on tattoos here, you know I'd be interested why you know why they have them. Uh, easy, cheap, fast promotion uh, works for me. And Ac Acme Band Supply Company just has everything for sale. Really, I mean, any anything that you would want for your uh, your band. Um, I don't I don't feel like necessarily the prices are are spectacular, but they have a lot of stuff, so they're worth checking out if you're interested in some unique ideas or options. Okay, uh, attract uh, seven ways to attract your fans to the merch table, and these are just off random blogs. Um, I thought they were cool. Uh, make it intriguing. Uh, you know, like I said, uh, 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 an unorganized merch table that just kind of has a couple things and maybe a piece of notebook paper with a Sharpie that says CD, $5. And then I get there and the CD says Memorex and crappy band name on it in Sharpie. Uh, that's not going to sell me, you know. And I'm, and I'm ready to buy. I'm always ready to buy merch, but I was, I'm always curious as to like how far bands will take it to make their, their merch table look, uh, look good. Um, real quick question, uh, just randomly. Uh, Zach was talking about QR codes. How many people in here have scanned a QR code? How many people have downloaded a record off of a QR code? Didn't work, huh? Ouch. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. 
uh, especially if you have all the uh, your merch, you know, your frisbees and whatnot on there. Coasters and temporary tattoos. VIP laminates. Um, so, uh, you know, one, one of the coolest merch tables I saw, uh, and this is going to shock you if you've been to one of these before, uh, is the band Hidden Hospitals. Uh, uh, I tend to reference them because uh, I feel like they do it better than any other band I've seen in every, every capacity. Uh, and their merch table, they brought their own, like, drop cloth to cover their part of the table. They had, like, a vintage lamp that they plugged in and kind of, like, lit up their little area of the merch table. All of the the prices were in, uh, like, some of the prices were in, like, antique-looking frames that were, uh, like, hand-drawn or hand-stamped. They had, like, actual wax-stamped price, prices on their shirts. They just they went the extra mile, and their little three-foot area of merch table looked awesome and i like i saw it i'm like what is that over there and i'm like oh my god it's a it's merch I'm like i will pay oh just give me one of each i've never been more impressed fortunately they only had one shirt so it wasn't like a huge hit to my my wallet at the time uh but i thought it was great and uh it was it was it was classy you know i've seen bands do like the huge like pvc pipe uh backdrops with like uh almost um, uh, like all of their shirts like hanging and like uh, blinking Christmas lights and all this stuff and it's like that's not necessarily classy it definitely got my attention but it also you know it was uh, it was obnoxious you know to, to me like to see all of that stuff you know like all, all the other uh, merch you know merch setups were nice and small and then one just has like it's lit up like the house and uh, uh, Christmas vacation it's just like blinding like well yeah I got my attention I suppose but uh, you know some, something about looking looking you know somewhat classy um, so uh, make it intriguing avoid clutter um, like if you you can you can usually order uh, either from disc makers or um, you might even be able to get it on Amazon uh, different little uh, displays for CDs or records um, easy enough that, that you can just kind of like put out so that way they're all in a row and it, it looks sharp and it's you know it's organized looks professional uh, same thing with shirts you can get you know like you can you can hang them up or you know I've seen people do like uh, like they get almost like a, a fence type of you know grid and they just kind of clip the shirts on there I've seen other other people and I think I even put a a graphic image in here on the last page of bands that used like the like almost like mannequin torsos and put put shirts on that uh, looks looks professional you know it's, it's, uh, it, I guess it all depends on how much space you have uh, if you have uh, a lot of a lot of space that's not a big deal but if you're sharing that table over there with four bands and you have three mannequin torsos that you're trying to set up uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough and uh, I'm sure the other bands won't really be thrilled with you. Um, so uh, making things accessible. Uh, th this to me is twofold. Uh, one, making all of your merchandise items available to be seen, you know, having, having the different shirts up. And you know, if you have one merch design, but you have three shirts, you can usually like fold the shirts over. So like one design is displayed, but you might just see the sleeves of the other the other shirts so you can get a, a feel for what the colors are um, but then making it accessible in terms of selling it no one wants to sit at a merch stand uh, while you dig through a box of 400 shirts um, so the easy thing to do is you know split them up by size you can either put them in different boxes uh, most bands I feel like these days just roll them up with some tape and put the you know put a sharpie on there for XL or whatever um, but if you're gonna have shirts that aren't black and you sharpie them, you sharpie the ink, make sure that the ink dries before you toss it back in the box. Because I've seen quite a few shirts where like, you know, they're a gray or a blue and there's like smeared ink on there because all the shirts were just kind of thrown in the box. And I was like, ah, oh, that, that sucks. Because now I don't want this shirt because it's got Sharpie all over it. Um, and then the other thing that I think works really nicely is uh, like a rolling Tupperware unit with drawers. You can get them pretty cheap and just have each drawer for the different sizes uh, real quick. 
real fast. Just like get in, get out, uh, and then just mark your inventory sheet that you sold one, you know, T-shirt. The transactions real quick. Um, so, uh, do, do any of you sign up for email lists out of curiosity? If a band has an email list, yeah, uh, yeah, that's, uh, some of this stuff might be outdated, and I'm pretty sure that this thing, this uh, blog post was from March. Uh, but uh, I don't, I don't see too many uh, email lists having that much success anymore. It's probably easier to have an iPad set up that they could just type it into if, if you're going to do that at all. Um, so having some sort of presence at your merch table after the uh, uh, after your performance, you know, uh, I in a perfect world I would think that you could have someone that ne isn't necessarily in the band running the merch table, so that way you can tear down your stuff and then get over there, um, because that's. That that to me is valuable. You, you know the the biggest times after uh, or the you know the, the chances are the the you will sell your merch immediately after your performance and immediately after your performance you probably should be taking your gear down unless you're the last band playing that night. Um, so if you have a friend or girlfriend or whatever who's willing to uh, man the merch table for a few minutes uh, to buy you some time, highly recommended. A um, couple other merch stand tips. Uh, good location. Um, some people feel like it, you know, it's by the bathroom. Other people think it's, you know, by the exit. So there are some bands that I'll see like steal one of these circular tables and put it over there uh, by the hallway. Um, I'd be curious to, to ask them if they feel like they sold more merch because they were, you know, 20 feet away from the other merch table. Uh, my guess is it uh, probably doesn't help in a place like this, but maybe, maybe at a, a bar or something like that would be a little different. Um, Backdrops and banners to know, uh, like, you know, people can see your merch, uh, at least your section of the merch table with relative ease. Um, I think I always thought banners look cool, uh, not necessarily for the stage, um, unless they're done really well. But like, as maybe like the the either a stand up backdrop by your merch or like over the front of your table, I always thought they look good. Um, you know, so that way when someone's walking in, they can see that your your section of merch, you know, covering the front of the table says your terrible band right on there with your terrible logo. This is nice. Um, so uh, let's see here. Like, yeah, having having band members or someone present, variety of merch we talked about, mailing lists. Man, everyone's driving these mailing lists home. I don't I don't buy it. Um, so let's see here. Yeah, specials like a combo deal. Uh, I, I really like that, you know, if a uh, shirt's $7 and a CD's $7, but I can buy them both for 10 awesome, I'm, I'm in. Uh, things like that. Uh, tip jars, Do you, any, does anyone use a tip jar? One, how, how successful is that? Uh, only do it on a tour. You only do it on a tour? Super lame if you're the local band. Yeah, I, 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 won't, I won't argue that. But Yeah. No, I, I believe it. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like a tip jar doesn't hurt because not everyone wants to spend $5 on your CD or shirt or something like that, but they might have a dollar or two to toss in. And you know what? Yeah, I was going to say, you get $2, that's half a gallon of gas now. So, you know, live it up. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it talks about here about running out of uh, sizes of items. Like I said, if you keep if you keep an inventory, uh, it's pretty easy to follow follow that. It's, you know, big big fan of that. Um, so, uh, other thing is is handling cash. Um, Hopefully, if you guys are dealing, if you if you guys sell enough merch, uh, I would re recommend just picking up a cheap lockbox off of uh, eBay or Amazon, something like that. You can get them cheap enough, so that way you're not just using a box or your pocket or something like that. Um, because it's not a huge deal if uh, you know with just generally selling merch, but you'll probably want to have some change on hand. So that means there's going to be some cash sitting in a box somewhere, and having a lockbox uh, doesn't hurt. Um, and uh, one of my one of my old buddies used to put 
like he had a lockbox and he would set up his merch table in an area where he knew he could um, lock the lockbox like it had a handle and he would just put a bike lock on the lockbox so that way someone couldn't walk off with the box uh, which is also something that's worth doing if you are playing f places that you're not familiar with uh, anything that you really like and is small enough for someone to pick up and walk away with pedalboard pedalboard case guitar case stuff like that bike locks just a bike chain you know put you can you can bike chain your guitar case to your cab or to three other guitar cases or something like that something enough just to make it uh somewhat difficult for someone to try and steal it because as we talked about before someone will try and steal it if it's if it's cool or has value at all especially in chicago like especially in chicago uh someone will steal it uh so it's worth you know that the four dollars and a cheap bike lock is gonna make uh, all, all the difference in in the world um so just some, something to consider uh so small lockbox keep some cash on hand maybe 10 or 15 bucks in singles 10 or 15 bucks in fives and that would hopefully would get you through the show give or take i can't imagine anyone's going to go up to a local band show and say can you break 100 uh you never know but it's probably a fake 100 so i watch out for that too uh so um, the other thing, uh, it's probably the biggest, coolest thing to happen to bands and merchandise over the last decade is uh, Square or online, online merch sales, uh, where you basically plug in a little credit card reader into your smartphone and you can take credit cards. And it's wonderful because that used to be the oldest trick in the book of, oh man, I'd love to buy some shirts, but uh, I don't have cash. Well. You know, jokes on you now, because I can take your credit cards too. Um, and uh, the most recent update to Square, I feel like within the last month, was um, that they're doing. Uh, uh, you don't need Wi-Fi or a cell phone connection. You can scan it, and then the second you get Wi-Fi or a cell signal, it'll it'll upload it. Uh, and there's the, uh, obviously there's going to be a slight risk in that because you don't know if it's going to be declined or anything like that but chances are if they're buying a five or ten dollar shirt they're they're probably not going to be trying to use a declined credit card uh you'll probably be in the it, it you know you'll probably be in the clear uh just know that there is going to be a little bit more risk uh to that but and there's a, there's a few different options now uh paypal had one uh, although i don't know if they're if they're still doing it i know that paypal's always kind of rolling out uh, and implementing new changes and up updates and upgrades and uh you know personally for my business i use square uh pretty consistently and i think it's great uh so if you have any uh if anyone in the band has a smartphone or an ipad or something like that absolutely use square uh it's, it's like i said it's the, it's the best thing to happen to band merch in a long 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 time um so uh a couple a couple graphics on there like i said there's I just searched merch stand and the skillet one came up and is, you know, looks nice enough. But again, then again, like chances are, their their merch space is going to be a little bit a little bit larger. Uh, and then the tour laminates, you know, or just just general laminates look cool. Uh, so I thought I'd put those on there. Uh, one other thing to keep in mind, uh, and I didn't put this on here because I didn't think that anyone's going to be uh, dealing with it any in the near future. Um, but sometimes. If you are playing a bigger, cooler show, there are merch uh, regulations. The prices have been set. The headliner says, my shirt is going to be $30, and all other shirts have to be $30. So you can't undercut them. Bless you. Uh, and, you know, like, like I said, I mean, this, this is more of like a big festival type deal. I know that uh, a lot of... I, I used to work for a, a smaller record label, and uh, we had some bands on OzFest. And uh, Ozzy, uh, he was selling his shirts for forty dollars, and these bands had you know cheap one color T-shirts that they had to sell for forty dollars, uh, and they sold uh, almost no shirts. Uh, but that's that's just kind of the, the how the game's played, um, you know. That's and it's it's not limited to t-shirts to, to it's just you know usually someone will set the merch prices and then you kind of have to abide by that um 
and that that's a double-edged sword. I mean, obviously that sucks, but if you're playing a, something co that large, good for you. You you know you're you've got other things to worry about at that point. Um, and then uh, something to consider is if you if you play uh, cool enough venues, um, some the, use the metro as an example. Uh, they will take a, a cut of your merch. Um, if they, you know, some, sometimes they can staff your merch uh, table for you. Um, if you didn't, if you didn't bring someone, and they they take like ten or fifteen percent to cover it. Um, you know, that's. I think it depends on the band and the situation if to make whether or not that's worth it. Uh, you know, I, I remember the first time we played there. Uh, it's a long time ago. Like, yeah, you sold, you know, twenty shirts. And you know, here here's your cash. It's like, man, this feels a little bit light. Like I'm not gonna complain, but you know, wasn't there shouldn't there be more? They're like, Oh yeah, that's ours now. Like, oh. Then it was my fault for not asking the appropriate questions. Uh so, you know, definitely definitely if if, if you are playing a venue that has uh, a specified merch area or can staff it for you, I would uh it's worth asking if they if they plan on taking a cut or a percent. So uh, that's that's all I got for tonight. You guys have questions or uh, anything? I'm I'm down down to chat. Anybody? There's a. Yeah, I, I, giveaways are amazing. I, I couldn't I couldn't recommend doing that enough. I mean, anytime that you have any merch that you want to give away, you know, if, uh, you know, mention it on stage, you know. Come on over, and I'll give you a. Yeah, if anyone wants a shirt or a CD, come on over, and I'll give it to you. I think that stuff goes a long way. Uh, as many freebies as you are willing to give away, realistically. Uh, and, and the better the quality, you know, that makes a makes a big difference. Um, my uh, my friend Justin, who's usually here, uh, working on his laptop. Uh, he uh, his old band. Uh, he was in a. I don't even know what you'd call him. Like a progressive hardcore band, uh, but all of their their all of their music was based off of movies. So like he, they released a record called the Kubrick Collection, and each each song was their their uh, interpretation of a, a Kubrick film, which is awesome. And they had the 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 CDs were. The, the pressing was spectacular, and they they took the the candid shots uh, in the Libertyville music uh, movie theater before they kind of renovated it to look not as terrible as it used to look, uh, and it just it just looked terrific, and easily the, one of the nicest looking CDs I've seen. It helps because like I, I've always said, Justin's one of the best graphic designers I know. Uh, he, he's he's incredible, and his his thoughts on logos and just branding in general is just spectacular. Uh, and you know he, he's like, yeah, we got two thousand of these CDs. It's like, cool. How much are they? He's like, oh, free. I'm like, free. How much did that cost? He's like, a lot. I'm like, and you're giving them away. He's like, I want people to have them. You know, it's, he's like, and his his uh, his take on music uh, is something I've always I've always appreciated. Uh, you know, some people golf, some people play paintball or hockey. And like, if you play paintball, you have no problems buying all the stuff to modify your gun and buy the paintballs and all that. And you go out every weekend and you play paintball, and it costs a lot of money. It's a hobby, and you put your money into it, and you don't expect you, you're not hoping to get some sort of return on shooting someone else with a paintball. You're just willing to give that paintball away to the other person <laughs> if if you're a good shot. Uh, it's not really the same. <laughs> no, you, no, but but the thing is. He's like, you know, music is a hobby that, you know, he and I'm assuming the majority of us love, and we're hoping a lot, a lot of times to invest some money into it, and then get that money back, which is, it's tough, as, as we all know, it's unbelievably tough. So if you think that you will get more of a return, not necessarily a financial return, just by merely giving it away, there's no harm in that. Yeah, I mean, I. That'd be good. That's an easy way to get your logo out there. Just to 
like uh, I suppose it would probably be easier to like paint your logo with a with a paintball gun. Uh, but it's been a while since I've played, so my aim's probably terrible. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, man, a any like uh, like I said, freebies. If you can give away candy, that's great. But if you're willing to give away, you know, shirts or CDs, you know, uh, bands that have a shirt that they toss from the stage, that's cool. You know, you give it away. You know, building building some sort of uh, brand quality with with the people who are actually interested in your music. It's awesome. Anyone else? Merch? Anything? Otherwise, you guys can just hang out with each other. Except for him. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Cool. Well, then, uh, go if you, if you don't know someone here, go shake their hand and get to get to know them. Hang out and talk music. Thanks, guys. <laughs>